Hey there everybody, this is TJ with Shop by Tools and today's training is going to look into the introduction of 3D carving. So we'll look into different materials, uh, bit selections, feeds and speeds, and really what we're going to do is bring in the 3D model, set it up in the software, toolpath it, and cut it out. And let's get started. So what we'll need to do first is set up our software to match the size of the material that it is that we're working with. The first cut that we do in 3D carving is called a roughing tool path, where we rough out the material at a, at a faster, harder rate, where we aug out whatever is up above. So we can now switch over to our finishing tool path, where we use a lot smaller ball nose, which is a little bit more delicate down in here to get that detail. And then what we have at the very end is our 3D relief carving. And we'll talk about cleaning it up and, and go into it in a little bit more depth as we go through today's training. So this PowerPoint is available for download if you'd like to use it for later on. Uh, what we're going to look at here is in the software, setting it up, the different files and whatnot to get you going. Today's software that we're going to look at is the Vectrix software. Since all ShopBots come with Vectrix VCarve Pro, that's the main software that I'm going to demonstrate for today's training. There are obviously other softwares for getting into more 3D modeling, creating your own 3D, doing more than just a relief carving. Maybe you're doing a full 3D, but since each of your ShopBot purchases comes with the VCar Pro. I want to show you what you can do with the software that comes with your machine. Um, what you do need to know is the type of model that you're going to be working with. Uh, and what that is most important to you beginners is the file format. So you, what kind of file, 3D file, can you import into your software? So... Right here from the screenshot of the software that you're using in the in the VCar Pro, if I was to go File, Import, and I'm looking for my 3D models, it will show you different types of 3D models that are imported. And the most commonly used one is an STL file. And then if you're using the files that come with the software, they're already going to be a Vectric 3D model. Or if you get them from their design and make website, which is a Vectric company, those also will already be in a 3D model V3 format. Uh, what I want to show you in this slide, though, is you have a version A, a version B, and a version C. So this eagle head that we're going to go cut out here in a minute when I download this model, I get a A, a B, or a C version of the same one. So you can see it's an eagle head, but it's the different outline as where you have an A, B, or C. Just a helpful reminder, A, you could say is alone. It doesn't have a background. B has more of a bold surface. See, it's a smooth bowl down in there. And C has that chipped, that chisel and hammer look around it. So just so you know, when you're importing in a file and you see three different formats that's what you're looking at right there so when we get into tool pathing the key is getting the step over and the feed and speed right for our 3d carving so i, I put a picture here of a couple bits the first one that we'll be using in our video is a quarter inch uh, this one here is just a quarter inch down cut bit so it's actually uh, end mill and the reason I use a down cut was so it doesn't actually pull up any of the thin onion skin or left little leftover material that we leave between our roughing and our finishing tool path. And then uh, I showed you here the uh, eighth inch tapered ball nose and the sixteenth inch tapered ball nose. Those are the two commonly ones that are used when we do our 3D carving. Again, depending on the carving size is depending on will be the bit size. The larger the carving, the larger the bit that you can use. The smaller the carving where you need more detail, the smaller the bit to get down inside and get that detail. And yes, for anybody that has not carved yet, you use an end mill for a roughing and then for your finishing tool path that you'll see here in a minute, it's just one bit that you use that goes across that whole carving. So in this case here where we pick a 16th inch tapered ball nose from our tool database, you can see here I put the ShopBot part number, which differs from the Onsrude, which is the brand of the bit manufacturer that has their part number. So you can order it straight through us. The key to this one is having a very small step over. 
if you read more up on 3D carving and bits, you will know that the sweet spot for getting a nice 3D carving is between 8 and 10%. So here we have a 9% step over. So that's why a 3D carving takes a while. You're using 9% of the bit's diameter. So that's pretty, that's, that's pretty small as far as the, bit, the diameter of that tip. Um, and then the other thing that you want to make sure that you have when you're doing a 3D carving is your feed rate and your plunge rate set at the same. Because your X, your Y, and your Z axes, all three of those are moving simultaneously together. So a 5 inch per second seems very fast, especially when you have it as a plunge rate. But remember, you're using 9% of the tip's diameter which is 0 0.0056 it's not very big of a of a of a step over so that's why we can get away with having that but that one's those are two things that are real key whenever you're setting up your tool database for a 3d bit whatever that bits diameter meaning the tip you want to have eight to ten percent of its for the step over and you want to have your feed rate and your plunge rate set at the same Depending on the material that you use, you are going to have little fuzzies or furries sticking out of the wood. So a couple of different ones that I like to use, and we'll show these in the video. Uh, here in this drill, you can see there's a slap disc. They call it a finger sander. There's different size ones for putting in a drill press or a hand drill. Also like on my little uh, Dremel, they have these little... Um, uh, little sponge sanders uh, th they do wear out quickly but they go in there and they're able to get down inside and do a real good job sanding and cleaning up uh, another thing that people like to do instead of just importing in a 3d model maybe you have something that physically exists like here on the right hand side is a climbing mold handle for someone that has a rock climbing wall and that just uses a digitizing probe and Xbox Connect, you could stand in front of it and it could scan you 3D. They also make 3D scanners. So all other things to look into for bringing in 3D models. And there is a lot more than just what we're doing today with 3D relief carving. Whether you have a fourth axis or a flip machining or a five axis, you can get into full 3D modeling. And you can do these on a larger um materials and use the slicing functions in the software and you're able to get into doing a lot more but for someone that hasn't done any 3d carving i would recommend starting out with what we're doing today with the relief carving where we're going to come in do a roughing tool path switch bits do a finishing tool path and have this uh, as your first 3d carving before you get into some of the next level stuff because what you can do here is pretty awesome with this it's, it's really neat what you can do with just a simple couple tool paths and bits right here in the software so here's the first file we're going to look at and creating a no fear sign and thought this would be a neat sign but would to add a 3d carving to it so just to show you kind of the method here to whatever madness you call drew a rectangle drew a circle started sizing things up with text kind of got it the way i want you can see where i've done a lot of editing and modifying of my vectors till i got it to my final presentation here and what i wanted to do at this point was bring in a model so down here you have a you earlier we saw we could go file import 3d model but also when you install your ShopBot edition of the software underneath the ClipArt tab um, on the little jump drive that came with your machine or sales, if they haven't already, email them. Uh, sales will send you the bonus ClipArts that come and you've got several here underneath the ClipArt tab. And I just grabbed the eagle head for no fear where I could double click or I could drag and I could drop into place where I want. So just so you know here, when you have version 9.5 and later, uh, you know there are several of these that come for download. If they have this little function right here next to the bottom right corner, that means they need to be downloaded through the portal, where if they're already um, highlighted like this, where they have the more color to them without the bottom corner, they're already installed. So those can just be dragged and dropped. So. So yeah, this is how you would bring in a model. At this point, you can actually use the rotate function, the mirror function, if you want it to be you know, flipped over horizontally over the material. I don't want it over, say, the material. 
I just want it over itself. That's where you could unclick some of these and, and, and have it just click over itself, looking the other way vertically. You could rotate it, obviously, using these functions, double click on it where you have the um, down here the handle. I want to I want to size this so it fits inside my circle. So I guess the first thing that I would do is um, say the size that I want. It's a seven and a half inch circle. So I will set my eagle head to be 7.5 inches. Apply. And just to make sure that is centered in my circle, which I can see that it is not because it's overlapping a little bit there and not so much over here. I'll grab my eagle, hold my shift key down, grab my vector that I want to have it centered to, and right here it says center objects. And for some of you that don't see this align objects, go, oh shoot, I like that function in this video. How do I turn that on? Um, you may come up here to transform objects, right here to this far right one over where it says align objects, and make sure this here is checked. So all these little tips and stuff that you see me doing, these would be other tutorials that you watch. Can't cover everything here in the one, but I like to point out some of these that are, if, if you're going to use it at least three times and say one project, it's worth pointing it out in that video so other uh, users can see that when they're using this. So you can see here I've centered that eagle in. I just want to make sure we don't overlook what we're doing for importing in. So yes, you could use the clip art tab for what clip art you may have in this library folder. And this is all stuff that you set up using your own, uh, you know, vector portal stuff. But, you know, for us old fashioned guys that haven't had the portal, I always go up here to file, import, 3D model. And then I have a folder somewhere on my computer that I have things hopefully in some organized fashion that I could go, okay, military. In the military, I have a Navy anchor. And then that makes sense when I bring that in, that that is what it's called. So really, you're just importing in this 3D model that already exists. Once you get your model in and you've rotated it, sized it, placed it, what you can do is bring up your toolpath side next and toolpath your project. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete the roughing and the finishing toolpath and set this up from scratch. So you can see we already have our sign that's being cut. All right, we have our V90 for our text. We have our V90 that we did for the border and the cutout. So what we need to show for this example is how did we do the 3D roughing and finishing toolpath. So the first one that we set up here was the roughing toolpath. And this one here, uh, again, depending on what type of bit that you want, depends on the size that you're using. For this model, uh, I'm just going to use a quarter inch. And this one here underneath my wood, I'm going to use a quarter inch down cut. And the reason I'm using a down cut is I don't want it to pull up and fray the material that I'm cutting this in. So depending on the material, if this was wood, that'd be important. You know, um, you know, think if this was an aluminum, I might want an upcut bit. So I'm pulling the chips up out of the cut. So learn a little bit more about your specific material. For this model here, I want to just machine inside of this vector. So I will go selected vectors. A uh, machining allowance is 0.04. That's just less than a sixteenth of an inch. So that's something I'm going to leave right on there uh, as my machining allowance. That is the material that it's going to uh, leave minimum material of, of scrap, or I'm sorry, of good material that it's not going to machine down into that finished cut. So when I click on this for my 3D roughing, you can see what it's going to do and get down in there for a roughing toolpath. All right. And I will tell you, if you're really worried about getting down in here better so you clean it out closer to where your finishing toolpath is going to be, you can always double click, come back in here, and modify your pass depth. The less of a pass depth that you have, the more it's going to cut down inside there. So it'll get it a lot closer to where it needs to be for that finishing toolpath. And this way, you're never really going to have a whole lot of pressure. You know, you could spend some time reading on the forum. Some people have one recommendation or the other on which way they may go for the roughing toolpath. But something like this, I think, is really a, a nice setup here for the roughing toolpath.
So when we get done with the roughing, we're going to go do the finishing. And for some of you that are just getting started, you're probably watching this video going, man, he is moving around fast in the software. So let me just slow things back down a second. When we're done looking at it in 3D view, up here along your upper left corner is the toggle between 2D and 3D. So you'll see me going there a lot. And then when I get out of preview toolpath mode and I want to get over to my next set of toolpath, I click close. And that's what brings up my 12 different toolpath options right here. So that's where you'll see me going a little bit faster. And that will come to you within time. Just it's more, the more familiar you are with the software, the more you're going to start using shortcut keys, the more you're going to start memorizing where different things are. So the next toolpath that we'd want to do after a roughing is a finishing toolpath. And the same thing I did before, I want to do that inside of that selected vector. And if you want to know what these different options are, again, go ahead and watch the help tutorial browser and watch the one that Vectric does on their software explaining all of these in touch, in depth. Uh, I'm just recommend, this is the one I prefer to use, and that's the one I'm going to show you here in the video, is selected vectors. So uh, for this one, though, uh, you can see in this tool database, Underneath this down here for 3D bits, have a 16th inch, an 8th inch, and a quarter inch bit. And you'll notice that all of these have between an 8 and a 10% step over. They all have a feed rate and a plunge rate that is the same in inches per second. And if you would like to know, you know, if you were trying to figure out what bit is right for that cut, uh, we'll do that one next here. We're going to do a golf ball as our second tool path, as our second project. So uh, I'm just going to use the 16th inch because I do know for this model on this eagle, the smaller bit is going to look a lot better getting down inside of the feathers on the back of that eagle. So I will select that smaller bit. And you do pick the direction of the cut. You can do an offset or a raster. Uh, in this case, I will do a raster where I have it raster back and forth, uh, depending on, again, the material, if you want to go with the grain or if you want to offset where you want to start in the middle and work your way out. Again, it all depends on the model, the material, and the combination of all of that together. For this example, we'll just leave it as a raster going back and forth along the x-axis. If I wanted to change that angle, I could do this here. That way I would not have to move my model out on the machine. I could actually have it raster at a 90 degrees instead of the default back and forth along the X. And when I hit calculate here, you're going to see a lot more lines going across because, again, it is stepping over 10% of a 16th of an inch. But now when I preview that, you can see that is how you get that fine finish. That one bit is what is being used to go and make that eagle head. And that little sixteenth of an inch bit is what gets down inside of these feathers and makes this. So let's get this one cut out, and then we'll come back and look at a second model and show you a couple different settings. The problem we would have right now is if we were to close out of this and go ahead and save these, the order of the cut that we'd be saving these in is an issue. We have text, bevel, then we have the cutout, then we have the roughing, and then the finishing. So just for you all that are still new with this, remember that you always grab these by selecting the text using your arrow keys and putting it in the position that you want. So I'm going to move that up and move that up there. I wouldn't want my finishing to go before my roughing. So again, it's all the order of the different cut. And for these, I personally would just save the, t the save them individually for different bits. And we go ahead and let's see what this looks like as we cut it out. So here, just so you can see the whole project actually in action, there's the V90 bit. Again, order of the cut is what I'm trying to look at here. We did the V90 first so we could do the text and then we'll do the border. When you're setting up these files like this, the minimum amount of bit changes is the best. So we get done with the V. And now here's our roughing tool path. Now again, I did this in sign foam for this example, just to show you a different material. You might not always have access to this, something you can find on the internet or a local sign shop, but it's real nice and soft, uh, easy to machine, not a lot of wear and tear on the bits, very stable. So it's doing the roughing tool path. So something as soft as this foam may not need as uh, 
as, as, as in depth of a roughing tool path because it's so soft. But um, again, put it on there just just to show it to you for this video. So there's your roughing tool path. We, now we do the bit change, and that's where we switched over to that 16th inch tapered ball nose. And now you can see that it's doing the 9% step over of the 16th of an inch ball nose bit. So yeah, this is what takes a while. This thing took about uh, an hour to cut out the eagle head. And in the VCarve software, we're on the toolpath side, is a little clock that you can click on the clock icon, and that will show you how long this file takes. So I just took some screenshots here of it progressing through so we didn't have to watch it for the whole time. But again, I want to point out step over is key. And also, not only the step over, you can see the X, the Y, and the Z axes are all going to be moving together for a 3D carve. So that is why you have to have the X, the Y, and the Z all set up with the same feed rate. So 5 inches per second is what we have on this. It's not even getting up to the full 5 inches per second on this because it's not that big of a carving and it has so many different... Um, so many different movements that it's doing. Now here that it's just going straight across, it's able to get a little bit faster of a cut. But again, it has to have that same setting on it to go um, for your plunge rate and your feed rate. And then just doing the through cut here to cut it out. You know, you'd want to either have a vacuum holding it in place or tabs to hold the part. Hate to have you do all this nice work and then at the very last end, uh, profile cut the the thing budges at the end uh, the wrong direction and then you lose your cut so uh, so yeah this was uh, again on sign foam uh, doing this 3d model we had a roughing tool path and we had a finishing tool path so there are several different vector tutorials on setting this up but the thought I show it to you from the start and finish uh, through the software and over here onto a shopbot machine cutting it out Okay, I just uh, want to look a little bit deeper into the toolpath portion of this. So I just dragged in a golf ball 3D model, and I'm just going to do a finishing toolpath on this one. And let me just show you on this guy here. So I'm going to use my larger bit for this. So watch what happens here. This is a nice trick to see if you can figure out what bit it is that you need for that type of cut. So I'm going to grab the largest bit that I have. Obviously, the larger the bit the longer, I'm sorry, the shorter it would take, but the larger the bit, the less detail that you get. So this 3D finish with a 0.25 BN, so for ball nose, so I know which one I'm referencing. And in this example, since I'm just doing the foam, and I know the highest point is here in the middle, I'm not going to use a roughing tool path. I'm going to say use an offset, so it starts in the middle, and then it works its way out to where it gets deeper, and you'll see that here in just a sec. When I hit calculate, we can watch this. Slow it down here, our preview. And you can see where it starts in the middle, and then it works itself out. So by the time it actually gets down deep here, you don't actually need that roughing tool path because it's only working out that 10% of that bit's diameter. So yeah, a quarter inch bit right now I know is going to take less time than a sixteenth inch bit. And to me, yes, this is, looks like it's getting pretty good detail on this golf ball. And on the golf ball, with that quarter inch ball nose, my little stopwatch says it's going to take 31 minutes and 38 seconds, which is great. It's not a lot of time. So what I like to do, too... Sometimes if I'm looking at both the 2D and the 3D, if I can see more detail on that one, uh, I might grab and create a second tool path and go here with a smaller bit. So, so if I grab my 16th inch, leave everything here the same, and call this my 0.0625 BN, and hit calculate, we're all pretty good here that we know a smaller bit is going to take longer than the larger bit the smaller bit is going to get more detail is it necessary in this model without physically carving it how do i tell is i guess the, is the big question here at hand so um you know right now i can already tell that it's a difference of 31 minutes versus two hours it's a quarter of the size of the big bit is it worth doing so that's up to you as the finished uh, product 
Um, where's this going? Is it going to be in your hand? Is this going way up on a top of a building where no one's going to see it? Is this going to be passed around for everybody? So what I like to do in the software, whenever I'm doing a 3D model, is I run the first one with the, with the, the ideal bit size. And then I'll turn my previewer to the slower si setting, and I'll grab that smaller bit, and I'll run that. And I'll actually look to see, or I'll zoom in before I even start this, and I'll see if I'm getting much more detail. And if it looks pretty much the same, there's no sense of running that smaller bit. Because we know that the smaller bit is not going to get any more detail and take longer time. So in the case of this golf ball, I'm going to come down here to this bottom red X and hit cancel and say stop. I don't need to see that. I'm going to right click and go delete this. In this case, I don't need to have this. That's not going to do me any good. In the case of the eagle head, if I was to try to cut that eagle head with the finished tool path, instead of using that sixteenth of an inch, I actually went in here and used the quarter inch bit. Obviously, when I hit calculate on this one, and we go reset, preview all tool paths, I'm not getting near as much detail with that quarter inch bit. You can see it around his eye around his feathers and everything. So that's where I like to run two tool paths, one with a big bit, one with a small bit. If I can see a lot better resolution with a smaller bit and it's worth it in time, I'll always run the smaller bit because I want to get it as close as I can to the model that I was drawn. So let's let's show you this out on the shop bot with the golf ball not having the roughing tool path. So we can see it starts in the middle with this tool path and it starts working its way out. So again, X, Y, and Z are obviously all working. We started in the middle where the model is at its highest point. So we didn't need to rough down in there. So by the time this big quarter inch bit actually works itself out to the outer part of the model where it's at its deepest, it's only taking off 10% of that bit's diameter. We don't even need to use a roughing tool path. So for this golf ball, there was no roughing tool path. There was a finishing tool path, and then there was a uh, profile end mill all the way around it. Because now here where I'm about an inch deep, again, I'm just shaving off 10% every time I go around that. So I hope this was another helpful one to show you with modeling what you can do. You don't always have to use a roughing tool path. And especially with something like this that doesn't have grain where you can work in different parts of the material and start in the center at its highest and then work itself around. So uh, you can see move out of the way here. Again, tabs, clean out your tabs or turn off your vacuum in this case. And then that pulls that off there. And that you can see there's practically no finishing, which we'll look at here briefly next. All right, so for sanding, one of my favorite things are these little sponge sanders that couldn't go inside your Dremel. They do wear out quickly, but you can buy them in bulk, and they're really nice to go in a Dremel and get down. There's another finger sander here, which can go in a drill. There's larger ones for a drill press. There's different slap sanders of different grits. You look through any of these woodworking catalogs or online, you can find all kinds of different sanding. These are just a couple of my favorites. So yes, the Dremel, the little sponge sander for my Dremel is my favorite tiny one for getting down inside. The next one is that one um, on the drill, which I can get down inside uh, of you know, medium-sized crevices. Uh, that one goes, again, right in the drill. It's a little finger sander, local place here called Klingspore over on the west side of North Carolina where we get those out of. Uh, big fan of that one. And then out on the drill press for doing bigger stuff, uh, I've got a larger, which again, you can get different grits and uh, put that out on the drill press. So, yep, sometimes depending on the material that you're using will be how much cleanup that you have to do. But setting your ShopBot tool paths up in that Vectric software with a 10% step over is going to get rid of most of the stuff. But some, sometimes you still got a little bit. Just be careful. Some of these you can sand too much away and then you've sanded away a lot of your detail from your finished project. This tutorial was an introduction to 3D carving. This is so you can import in a model, tool path it, and cut it out.
there's a lot more that you can learn and get more advanced with more 3D carvings. For you that are just getting started with this stuff, on our training page off our main website, you can see several of our tutorial that are right here. For some of you that are new with just using the Vectric software, you can go to thevectric.com and watch their tutorials. But any of the stuff that you saw today that you want to keep building on, there's other stuff out there for it. The forum is also a very valuable place to go and ask questions. Uh, get on our website, read up, look around, ask questions. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's training. Hope you get something carved out of 3D and can move on and start doing even more and more 3D carving with your ShopBot CNC machine. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.